can be a complicated and frankly a dry subject. Given the choice between learning the six legal copyrights you get when you create a song or watching a six day cricket match, most choose cricket, usually for the beer. <laughs> That's why we felt it important to bring in a voice like mine. Because with the right British accent, just about anything sounds fascinating. Let's start at the beginning. No, not that beginning. The beginning of your song. Say you wrote a song onto a napkin, hummed it into an iPhone, or recorded a song at a studio. The minute that song leaves your head and becomes tangible, it gets six legal copyrights, each one as exciting and sexy as the one before it. So welcome to Copyright 101. Pour yourself a spot of tea, put away your Monty Python DVDs, and let's get started, shall we? Congratulations! You have just given birth to a song and are the proud owner of something that has value. And not just because we say so, but because the laws around the world say so too. There are two copyrights in every recording. Let's introduce a few friends to help illustrate. This is Dolly Parton. She wrote the song, I Will Always Love You. This is Whitney Houston. And this is Columbia Records. Columbia Records hires Whitney to sing Dolly's song. Now Columbia Records owns a recording of Whitney Houston singing Dolly Parton's song, I Will Always Love You. Columbia Records controls the recording of the song, represented by a P in a circle. Visually stunning, we know. This P stands for phonogram. The song itself is owned by Dolly, as indicated by a C in a circle. And this C stands for copyright. These two copyrights, one for the recording of the song and one for the actual song itself, drive the entire music industry. Now, let's discuss the six legal copyrights that ensure that both you and Dolly make money off your creations. The six legal copyrights you get when you create a song are distribution, reproduction, public performance, digital transmissions, derivatives, and public display. Remember, a song receives these copyrights the moment it sees the light of day. It doesn't matter if you professionally recorded it, or merely scribbled down lyrics after stumbling your way home having enjoyed a few delicious pints of Guinness. Your song has six legal copyrights, and no one can take them away. We'll now tackle the first legal right, the right to distribute. As explained earlier, there are two copyrights for every song, the right to the recording of the song, and the right to the song itself. If you want to distribute the recording of your song, meaning sell or rent physical or digital copies, you must do it yourself or have an agreement in place with a distributor. This negotiated agreement states which of your rights are being granted to the distributor and more importantly, how much you get paid for each unit distributed and sold. Related to this right is the use of music on the telly, in a movie or in any other video. Let's say James Cameron decides to make Titanic, the sequel, it's still sunk and wants to use Whitney's recording of Dolly's song in the film. To do this, he'll need two licenses. One from Dolly for the song itself, called a synchronization license. This grants him the right to synchronize her song to a moving image. The second one he'll need is called a master usage license for the right to the recording of the song, owned in this case by Columbia Records. Without both licenses, he, like the Titanic, will have sunk. The exclusive right to distribute is incredibly important because if it weren't exclusive to you, anyone could sally forth and distribute copies of any recording, including yours. The right to distribute is yours. Guard it well and only transfer this right to others under agreements you deem reasonable. 